right, all right, all right. Old man pain. that 40 plus pain right there. I, I didn't even do nothing. I think I just slept on it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've watched a few of these. I never really recorded one. Uh, figured I'd get into it. I'm more about um, you interested in being interested in what I have to say rather than what I look like. But, you know, I, I know people like the visual as well. So I'm not going to take much time. I know, you know, usually we wait for people to get on is the norm. But, you know, it's recorded. You can come back and, and view it later on. Um, but just a few things I wanted to touch on. Um, I know everybody's talking about Superfly last night and the vice presidential debate. I mean, by now, I'm assuming that everybody's decided who they're going to vote for. And hopefully everybody can discern the lies from, you know, from the truth or what the, and what they're hearing from the vice president, president, and the, and the candidates, right? It's, it's the lesser of two evils as too often the, that's what the choices come down to. Um, but it's still a choice to be made. So... You know, it's the difference of whether one one team will take you backwards or one team will at least hold you in position where you can have a better chance to move forward either with that administration or later on in replacing that administration. I think for me it's clear um, that although I could find a million faults with, um, with the Biden-Harris ticket, I'll deal with that after they get elected. I'd rather deal with that after they get elected than worry about what this Trump-Pence ticket would look like another four years in that administration would look like. Uh, peace, Reggie. Peace to everybody who's, who's tuning in. I appreciate y'all for stopping by. Um, so I'm not going to get into the fly sitting on his head. There's enough memes about that. I really want to focus on local as I normally do. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is, is kind of similar to what I saw in the debate. You know, um, So it gives people some framework in case you don't know. Well, I know you know about this part, so let me give you the basics. We know for the last seven to ten years there's been an opioid crisis exploding in America. We've seen it in Boston. It, it really lives directly um, in the Melania Cass, Lower Roxbury, South End area. And it's only increased year after year, year after year. And for those that are into history and data, I was a state rep in 2011, uh, and myself, then state rep Nick Collins, and then state senator Jack Hart from South Boston, the three of us realized that there were too many sober homes and treatment centers along this mile. It was formerly called Methadone Mile, we now call it Marty's Mile because of his lack of attention to do the right thing around it. So that's 2011. Now, since 2011, the problem has only gotten worse. Over the last seven, eight years, um, I have followed the leadership of Domingo De Rosa, uh, who is a coach, an activist in the area, but actually uses uh, Clifford Park more than probably anybody in the community um, had hundreds of young people playing football in the park. So he was the primary user of a man from the community, mentoring kids, um, and it was also a school nearby. And year after year we saw, we all saw, whether you live in Roxbury or not, there's nobody that's driven through Roxbury or gotten on and off the highway that hasn't seen that, that epidemic grow and grow and grow. More homeless, more drug addicted, more needles, and all the things that go with it. And, you know, for the elected officials to act like they don't know what goes with an open air drug market, you know that comes with prostitution. You know that comes with drug dealing. You know all the things that come, especially if you are, quote unquote, the recovery mayor, right? You would think that you have a team in place that would frame all the things that's going on and, and give you a plan on what to do around it, right? You have a health and human services chief, Marty Martinez. You, have, you pay people hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to deal with this issue. Um, Peace Counselor, thank you for tuning in. Peace Christian and everybody else is tuning in. I, I appreciate y'all. Um, so we started really grassroots organizing. Leon Rivera is another lead organizer who has been doing this work from the community for years now. 2014, I'm just going to take you back so, so that no one claims that they're just now finding out about this issue. 2014, I remember reaching out to the mayor. Clifford Park is about four blocks from where I spent 40 years of my life. Um, I know, like I said, I was a state representative for that area. I know the residents, I know families. Um, I played basketball in that park. I know families that use that park. 
I called him and told him, you know, what, asked him, what are we going to do about this park? His first offer to me was, we're going to try to keep the lights on. We're going to try to keep the lights on. Now, this is the recovery mayor speaking to me, and this is when we were on good terms, friendly terms, all right? I'll keep my personal stuff aside for now, and we'll just talk about the advocacy for this park. Anybody that knows anything about addiction, especially heroin addiction, knows that keeping lights on in the evening means nothing. So I was a little insulted that he would even offer that because you can find people that are addicted shooting up in broad daylight, high noon, and you ain't got no park light brighter than the sun. So from that interaction, I knew that he wasn't really ready to deal with this issue for whatever reasons he had. So Domingos and I and Leon and parents and teachers from the Mesa School and the surrounding area started calling 311. 311 allowed us to log in our complaints, get a uh, tracking number, and make sure that there's data around the things we're seeing. Now, this is only the things we're seeing. This is not as if we're walking down every alley, checking everybody's back porch, checking everybody's stoop. We'd spend weeks doing it. And we get some of the stuff cleaned up, some of the stuff is not cleaned up. It takes us uh, probably a year to get the elected officials at the time to come out and see what we're talking about. I remember being out there with Yahoo Miller of the Bay State Banner. I know the Fox News has been out there, and we're talking about 2014, 15, 16, 17. All right? This is, this is that period I'm talking about. No community meetings hosted by the city, no increased cleanup, no supervision of the cleanup. Nothing is changing. The, the problem is getting significantly worse. This is our recovery mayor. There's no recovery plan for it. So some elected officials, and this is when I this is when I get pissed off at elected officials because I don't like being bullshitted. And there are good elected officials, and then there's some that need to be held accountable. And I, I I'm offering this so that we all understand when we're being bullshitted. For you know, it's nice for an elected official to come down and, and walk the park with you and pick up a few needles and make their own 311 call. But what the elected officials are supposed to do, and the city council, I know the limitations of the city council, they're not the mayor's administration, but they are the first line of advocates in government for us as residents. So when you come down and see that we have this many needles, or if you have a staff of five that you can pay up to a quarter million dollars a year, $250,000 for a staff allotment, so that you can have the capacity to advocate on behalf of your residents and you see that your residents and part of your communities you represent, whether you are the district councilor or whether you are one of the four at-large councilors, and we say there's needles that need to be picked up every day, and we find out that the Sharps team, that there's only two members on it, obviously it's inadequate. A couple years go by, like I mentioned, uh, councilor at-large, Anissa Asabi George, came to that site with me, and she picked up some needles, called 311, and later on, when it was election year, I saw on a flyer that she advocated for, for doubling the size of the Sharps team. And I think, I think Domingos and I were at a meeting that they had at, at 1010 Mass Ave where they, they, they touted that same thing. We've doubled the size of the pickup team. Come to find out that, that meant they went from two people to four people. See? But that's how, that's how they'll bullshit you. They'll say, we doubled the number. But if they don't tell you the first number, then the second, then doubling doesn't mean shit. So you doubled it from two to four, still leaving us wholly inadequate. Four can't even deal with Clifford Park. Four doesn't deal with Ramsey Park, which is now Michael Bivens Park. Four doesn't deal with one city block anywhere in the city, never mind the epicenter of the epidemic. So you hear the mayor, you hear some elected officials talk about, oh, this is an epidemic. We're not going to solve this overnight. Cool, I get that. And I'm not going to get into the recovery part of it right now because that's a whole different issue. And it's a much more complex issue. It's a human health issue. I get it. It's going to take some thought and some planning. Not that I think a lot of that's happening, but it's going to take a lot of thought and planning. But here's what does not take a lot of thought and planning. Allocating the amount of resources and staff to pick up needles, to sweep sidewalks, to get street sweepers out, that don't take a lot of thinking. That don't take a, a crack staff of experts and PhDs for you to say, we probably need about six, based on the 311 calls we're getting, we need to focus our efforts here. That doesn't take a lot. So the fact that that wasn't done, I think is ridiculous. I, I think it's bullshit, frankly. 
So fast forward to when um, Sheriff Steve Tompkins, one of his COs, is driving down through this open air drug market that's been allowed to exist, although you know, although residents have complained about it, businesses have complained about it. And he hops out the car, trying to be a vigilante rather than call the police or rather than go back to the safety of his work and get help. He tries to be a vigilante and gets his ass beat. All of a sudden, the administration has enough money and resources to dump millions in overtime spending for police to come in, and I'm gonna use the term sweep or broom, Actually, I'm going to use their term, Operation Clean Sweep. They swept them from that area. We're talking about homeless people. It's not like you're sending them home. You're just moving them from one area to another. So now they've dispersed into the, deeper into the South End, deeper into Roxbury. And you can see it as you pe hear people complaining, you know, all the way up through Grove Hall and all the way into South End, almost downtown, into Boston Common, where you're finding more needles and more heroin addicts and more violence and everything that comes with it. So you have money for police overtime to do what effectively is nothing, but you don't have the money to clean up our parks and, and dedicate resources to make sure that the residents who live there every day while you drive by it are living in a safe, comfortable place for themselves and the, their children. That's bullshit. So let me pause for a second because I want to shout out and recognize and give people a chance to plug in, right? There are, there's a group called the South End Roxbury Partnership. And I want to shout out, again, Domingo De Rosa, Leon Rivera, and Yahira Lopez for doing some amazing work, right? South End was divided from Roxbury, and they were dealing with it as two separate issues. And, I, and we know about the invisible line and the race lines and the, the uh, income lines that, that hides between those two neighborhoods. But both of these neighborhoods are dealing with it. So rather than fight separately, they brought these two groups together dope work community organizing at its best they have started to make noise and protest every thursday you can join them and stand out with them on the corner of mass ave and washington street as they demand accountability they've also taken this message to governor baker's house and i think they're planning on taking it to the mayor's house as well they are hosting online meetings with councilors and elected officials some of whom have been in office since the beginning of when i started talking about this since 2013 so I'm interested to hear what some of them say. But last night, I had the unfortunate, the unfortunate privilege of sitting through a meeting. I missed the meeting with Councillor Baker. I tuned in for the, the meeting with um, Councillor Kim Janey, who represents District 7, which is parts of Lower Roxbury, parts of the South End, definitely uh, encompasses Orchard Gardens and a lot of places where you will find encampments, homeless people, addicts, needles, feces, you name it. And what was disappointing about this meeting is when I tuned in, um, first, she, I, from what I understand, she decided to control the Zoom herself rather than let the organizers who had pulled this together control the dialogue. I'm not feeling it, but okay. So when I log in, I realized that my mic is muted. Cool, we don't want everybody just diving in with comments because you can quickly lose control of the meeting. But the chats were also disabled. So that means the same community organizers and residents are now not allowed to speak to each other and raise questions while you have your staff online that could have been fielding questions from us, you know, everything is funneled into, you know, one or two people. Okay, I'm not feeling it, but cool. I think we spent about 30 or 40 minutes listening to the counselor act as though this was a new issue that she had just discovered and dived into. Um, as if she hasn't been, as she touts her 50 year history and claims herself to be an OG of Roxbury, talks about talks about Nubian Square as if the heroin epidemic is not as visible in Nubian Square, which it is. Which if you, you know, if you listen to, if you heard of the man Jamal Crawford, he talks about it all the time. We changed the name, but we didn't change the circumstances around Nubian Square. She spent a lot of time using campaign speech, talking about we're not going to arrest our way out of it. It's going to take all of us coming together. All of these anecdotes that really don't mean shit, especially when you're dealing with real live human shit on a day-to-day -day basis or needles with blood and heroin in them around your children. Nobody wants to hear anecdotes and pontification. But here's one of the points that she made that I thought was a good point, but I thought exposed her lack of advocacy. She mentioned speaking to the mayor, just as I just did in the beginning of this speech. But here's the difference. I told you, I asked the mayor, what is he planning on doing? 
and I, I told you what his response was, and I told you what I thought of his response. I thought it was bullshit. The counselor, Counselor Janie, said, oh, I've been speaking to the mayor about it. And then she didn't say nothing else. So I feel, in my opinion, and I want to separate opinion from fact, my opinion is it's not good enough for you to say you spoke to the mayor if you're not going to tell your community what you spoke about, what, the what you asked the mayor to do, what he said yes or no to, and then come back to the community and tell us what he said. What's the point of telling us that you spoke to him? She also brought up a good point, says, use 311. That's our receipts. You know what I mean? Like using a little a local, a local colloquialism. I like that. It brings you in touch with the people by using receipts. That's a term we use. You know, I keep the receipts. Well, what you going to do with the receipts? Because we've been calling 311, as I just told you. If you talk to Domingo de Rosa and others, we've been calling 311 for seven years. As a city councilor, if I was a city councilor, and I have a staff budget of $250,000 a year, I'm asking my staff to pull the records of 311. Let's find out how many calls, let's, let's figure out what the volume we're dealing with is. Let's use those receipts. Let's put those receipts on the mayor's desk when you make the ask. And then if he doesn't do anything, let's use those receipts to go to the press with the data or at least feed it back to the engineers and the people that are in that South End Roxbury partnership that I talked to you about. At least feed them the information because they'll do the work if you're not willing to do it yourself. And let them make a data-based argument based on our, because we're already calling 311. We don't need that coaching counselor. We've been calling 311. We know what our role is as community members. The question is, what is yours as a, as a counselor, as an advocate for the city, for the people that are closely connected to the city? You're the first line of advocacy in government for the residents. So then we got the, you know, we need smart solutions and we need to come together. It's okay if you come up with some solutions too, counselor. And I'm saying this not just to single out Councilor Janey because there are more meetings coming. And I'm sure a lot of these other councilors are planning on running the same bullshit down to you. Not all of them, but some of them. You know, like when I when I hear, you know, uh, Councilor Wu talk about her work, I know she got elected in 2013 as well. So you've been silent on the issue for seven years, and now that you're running for mayor, now you come to community meetings about it? I, we ain't never seen you at a community meeting in Roxbury about this shit ever, 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 ever. So I, I'm sharing this with people that listen because I don't want you to fall for the bullshit. I'm not falling for the bullshit. Um... There, there needs to be a higher level of expectation for elected officials. There needs to be, account when I say accountability, I'm talking about like vote somebody out, call them out. Like enough of the nice words, I know I'm usually politically correct and I'm usually trying to just, you know, be very kind and balanced. I'm, I'm done with that. You, you're not getting that from me anymore. Stop disrespecting our community by playing us for suckers. You're the city council, I'm going back to Councilor Janey, since I couldn't speak to you last night on a community meeting, here's my chance. You're the city council president. All you have offered around this issue in the two years that you've been in office, I know you joined the protest when Orchard Garden parents were, were, were walking and complaining. You, they put a drop box of needles right across the street from the school. Residents and parents asked to get that moved. Nothing. So you're telling me as a councilor you can't get that needle box moved across the street? I mean, we could get a two-wheeler and move that much across the street ourselves but we really shouldn't have to as a city council president a hearing a hearing and hearings are good to raise the attention of things but they don't solve anything but a hearing was called 46 days ago and there's still no hearing date you're telling me you can't put pressure on the chair of that committee to get you a hearing date really seriously bullshit i'm calling bullshit you have to offer us more so I just wanted to frame some of that from people um, about my frustration around it. And, and again, if there's several meeting, more meetings coming up, visit the South End Roxbury Partnership. It's a Facebook page. Join the group. Look at the meetings. Attend the Zoom meetings. Attend the, the rallies if you want. And be aware that this problem has not been addressed. And it's not a secret to everybody. Everybody in the city has, has seen it. We've all turned a blind eye to it at one time, either because we couldn't stand to look at it anymore um, or we just, some of us just don't care, whatever category, and some of us have, have, have been spurned to action. 
So if you fall in one of those three categories and you know what category you're in, figure it out. I'm gonna chill with I'm gonna chill on that for a minute. Um, the other part I want to touch on, there's two other pieces I want to touch on that's separate from, from Marty's mile. Uh, one is pay attention to what's going on in your schools. Uh, I know people try to also, you know, people try to make teachers bad people often. They try to build them as bad people. The Walsh administration signed the MOU. And for those that don't know, no shame in not knowing, a MOU stands for a Memorandum of Understanding. It's basically a written agreement saying, hey, if you do this, we'll do this. And this is our understanding. They signed the MOU with teachers that said, we will not have you come into schools if the infection rate in Boston goes over 4%. They put it in writing. The infection rate is now at 4.1%. Now, 0.1%, 0.1 might not seem like a big deal to most people until you actually put a number to it. Um, you know, if the agreement is 4.0, then 4.1 is over 4.0. What are you gonna wait till it's 5.0, 6.0? Excuse me. They are now reneging on that agreement. And I expect the teachers and the teachers union to start railing on the administration for lying, basically, or not holding their word. But to some of us, that's not a new thing. We don't expect the administration because time after time, they have either lied outright or, bull or suppressed information, uh, lied by omission, or just bullshitted you straight out. Give you an example, so I don't want you to think this is just my opinion. They told you the schools were safe for your children to be in. But you can look, you can Google reports and you can talk to your own children about they ain't had soap and running water in their schools for a decade. There's still lead in the water. They got water bubbles that ain't cleaned and maintained. There's no paper towels in the bathroom. If you didn't want to wash your hands and follow COVID protocol, the windows don't open. There's, you know, you could talk to um, a teacher named Michael McGuire at Latin Academy, shout out to Latin Academy, um, who will tell you that the, the, the temperature in classrooms is not regulated, it's freezing in the winter, it's hot in the, in the, hot in the summer, so the windows aren't opening and closing, so how could it be safe? You're telling me all of a sudden COVID came and the buildings got safer, or you found tens of millions of dollars to rehab it and you could have rehabbed it all along? I don't believe you, you call them BS. Watch the lies they tell you. And here's, here's another one. Here's another one. There's, there's, there's a lot of them. Here's another one. BPD, last year, there was a big issue about them not wearing body cams. After, you know, they didn't want to wear body cams. Now they got to wear body cams. They weren't happy about it, but they're wearing them. Then you found out that they weren't wearing them while they were on OT, overtime. Right? When they came out to the parades, the rallies, the, uh, whatever, the, whatever their police action was, if they're on overtime, there was no requirement to say they had to wear a body camera. So all of a sudden they're accountable when they're earning regular time, but when they're earning time and a half, they're not accountable by video. Does that make sense to anybody? But, it, but it's rules. So if you don't put it in their rules, they won't do it. They're only going to do what they're forced to do. So if someone makes a pledge and says, all right, all right, we're going to wear them during overtime. Report just came out in the Globe that they're still not wearing body cameras during overtime. So where is the accountability of where we pay for someone to be licensed to carry a gun in a shield and operate on our behalf. Human beings, not infallible people, people that make mistakes, people that got egos, people that got tempers, people that have mental health issues, people that are under a lot of stress every day. We can't even get the accountability of you wearing a camera and activating it because you're on overtime and, and the commissioner and the mayor won't work with the police unions to make sure that, that is solved? A year later, a year later after police officers at the state and city level have been indicted by federal agents for stealing money through overtime? Word? Falsifying timesheets? Being in court while they're arresting people? Saying they're in court while they're arresting people on the street at the same time? Shout out to Counselor Ricardo Arroyo for filing a hearing about that so we could actually get to some facts and truths about that. That's the heavy lifting, right? That's not saying we're not going to arrest our way out of it. That's actually doing some of the work to get some information that the city won't share with us. Um, this is the bullshit. This is the bullshit. And so as fired up as you get around um, Pence and Trump, as fired up as you get around Biden and Harris and whether you like them or not or whether you're falling for the old Democrat being taken for granted, before you get to that national level where you don't really 
or in who the electoral college is and whether your vote counts or whether the mail-in ballot's going to get there. Yo, they bullshitting you in your own town. Your city council is bullshitting you. Your mayor is bullshitting you. Your police commissioner is bullshitting you. And they have been bullshitting you. So let's make a stand there by being informed. Oh, while I'm thinking about bullshit, I know there's a, a, a um, boycott going on about stashes. Now, this is opinion. Feel how you want about it. But I'm not spending any money. I, I never eat, I've never eaten that stashes in my life. But I'll be damned if I do anything to support any business where it's reportedly, and I didn't know that it, there were so many complaints and testimonials about it until I started reading them, that they've been disrespecting black women, calling them out of their name, and disrespecting them because of their color and their gender. Nah. I don't care if you are Instagram, Facebook personality. I don't care if you run a special group or center. I'm not for it. I'm not, I'm not for it. So use your vote and your money as your power. That's your leverage. If you ain't going to use those two as power, what the fuck are you complaining about? Seriously. What are you complaining about? Because if it's going to happen right under your nose, you, you don't have no business talking about Trump. You don't have no business talking about Biden. If you ain't going to check those that are doing it to you on a day-to-day. -day. I'm, I'm going to pause there. I don't like to do the long lives. I don't, this is my first live, but I, I don't like watching the long lives either. Um, I was going to get into some other stuff. I'll save it for another time, but I just wanted to leave you with that. Um, I believe the stash is boycott. I believe they're doing a standout or protest on Saturday. Um, that's on Facebook. You can find it. Councilor Kim Janey is a public official. Create the dialogue. If you live in Roxbury, the south end of District 7, tell her what you expect. Call her office. It's a public office. City councils make $100,000 a year. And like I said, their staff is a, a worth a quarter million a year. Make them work for you. Shit ain't a free ride. Um, the teachers MOU, shout out to the teachers. I know education is tough for parents and teachers right now. Um, it's going to be a long road. I don't expect the fall to be any better as it gets cold. Flu season. People are going to start treating people with cough and sneeze like they got the plague. Let's try to be kind. Let's try to work, think about our mental health and how we you know, create small, safe communities where you still get social interactions, you still get exercise, you still get healthy mental health um, stimulants for yourself, whatever, it needs to, whatever you need to do for you. Um, but let's, not, let's, let's start falling for the lies, man. Let's, let's really, we could do better and we should do better. And if anybody got any questions for me, Holler at me. Let me scroll through these comments real quick before I close out. Because um, I don't want to miss any conversation. I don't want to just be preaching. I definitely want to have a conversation. Um, teachers are talking about striking, as they should. I mean, teachers are teachers vary in age from 30 to 50, right? It could be going home and getting their, 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 their children sick. I mean, their grandparents sick or their parents sick or people they care for. Got to keep the windows open. If they open, they might not all open. Um... Yeah, I think I covered all the comments. I appreciate y'all tuning in. I appreciate y'all listening. Um, I'm going to do this more often. If you have an appetite for it, please let me know. A brother's not above receiving affirmation. You know what I mean? Affirmation is good. Let's me know that I'm doing the right thing. Let's me know that you appreciate it, and I'll keep delivering. If there's certain topics that you want me to talk about, um, if you're a candidate and you're thinking about running, please holler at me aside. I, I'm, I'm happy to help and consult depending on, on, on what you're planning on doing and how that can, how that can work. Um, there's a city council race next year. 2021, there's a mayor's race next year, three candidates. I'm not excited yet. That's my personal feelings. Don't have to be yours. Um, there is an open seat for District 4 because Andrew's Councilor Andrea Campbell is running for mayor. There's an open seat on the, on the at-large city councilor because Michelle Wu is running for mayor. So there's already two open seats. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of challenges. If you're thinking about running for office now, let me know. Um, if you're thinking about it down the road, let me know. If you don't have to even be running for office. You might want to be a campaign manager. You might want to be a field organizer. You want to be, want to be a community organizer. These are things that I've had experience doing. I'm happy to share my knowledge for some for free, for some for a fee. You can reach me at los at stillreppin.com. And um, I look forward to speaking to y'all. Community, stay strong. I love y'all. Peace.